Good morning. Today on Spotlight, a conversation about the Israel-Hamas war, America's involvement, and why everyone should be concerned. Our guest this morning will explore this sensitive and emotional topic. Rabbi Asher Lapatin, Executive Director of the Jewish Community Relations Council, AJC Detroit, and Dr. Mahmoud Al-Hadidi, a leader of the Michigan Muslim Community Council and the World Peace Association, will join us to share their thoughts. It's Sunday, January the 7th. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is Spotlight. Why did you decide to come in and have this conversation in a very sensitive time? I'll start with you, Rabbi. Well, thank you so much. And I'm very grateful to Dr. Al-Hadidi for joining me here. Um, you know, this is such a time of passion on both sides. And both sides, I mean people that are lovers of Israel, people that are lovers of Palestinians, people that are lovers on both of both of them. Um, and because there's so much passion and the stakes are so high, and we're talking about so many lives on the Israel side, on the Palestinian side, that I felt it's so important to show that we can, we can be friends and disagree. And you know, Dr. Al Hadidi is someone that I, I really look up, look up to you. Uh, and um, we disagree very much on this issue on a lot of things in the Middle East. But that friendship is so important, and that's sort of a positive thing. That's something that we can model. That it's not diminishing how much we disagree, but what it is is showing that we can move forward with friendship and that's the way to move forward with friendship with talking to each other with being respectful to each other and i think that's such an important model and having a civil dialogue absolutely that's something we can really show here especially in detroit with such a diverse community a large muslim arab american jewish community that's something that we can really bring again it's not to diminish how much we disagree on these issues sure. but it's to move forward and do the best we can do for all the parties involved. Sure. As a child, I thought I could save the world. When I'm an adult now, mm -hmm. and I'm a doctor, I realize that that's not possible. But if we can save one life, it's like saving all humanity. It's in the Quran, it's in the Bible, it's in the Torah. He who saves a life as if he saved mankind. And there's no better time to talk about peace when violence and killing is outraging throughout our world. This and is and we should emphasize that you're a medical doctor, a yes. trained medical doctor. Yeah. I was privileged to save many lives in my life as a physician. But now I feel that I am very compelled to try to save lives of children and civilians in the Middle East, in Palestine, and probably around the world. We have to talk about things that are not being talked about. Is what is causing violence, the cause of violence, whether it's oppression, occupation, uh, terrorism, uh, uh, uncivil dialogue, personal interest, financial interest. That's what's causing all this uh, unrest and murders around the world. Well, we have to address the cause. Sure. Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, let me get both of your perspectives because this topic uh, is so steeped in history. Uh, and it, you could start at a lot of different points. But from your individual perspectives, in a nutshell, uh, why do you believe we are sitting in the midst of an Israel-Hamas war? Well, I think that there are two issues. One is a longer issue of the refusal of many Arab states and the Palestinian leadership, at least, to accept the Jewish state and the right of the Jews to live in their homeland whatever that state looks like. And there's been that refusal from the very beginning, from the UN partition plan, 47, 48, 60. It's just been that refusal to accept. Now, many- And that's several, many presidents ago, US yeah. president, uh, Harry Truman was president. And, and many Arab states, several have accepted Israel, but there's that, that refusal. But the other thing is the difficulty of fighting Hamas, which has been a terrorist state terrorizing the Palestinians in Gaza and using human shields and mosques and, and um, ambulances and hospitals to, to fight a war. So the difficulty 
in fighting a terrorist state that is something that is so hard and so painful, and there have been so many deaths of innocent Palestinians because of that. So those two issues, one is the refusal to accept the Jewish state and the Jewish people's right for their homeland, and the other one is just fighting a horrific terrorist organization which controls Gaza, and that's been so difficult. Okay. Uh, Dr. Al Hadidi, I'm going to give you a chance to respond to that. Yes, I You I may see there a little differently. That. We're going to take a quick second. We're going to go to a quick little break. When we come back, we'll get your response to that. We'll be right back. Dr. Al Hadidi, same question to you. Why do you believe we're in the midst of this war? Unfortunately, it's the hijack of religion and hijack of pure ideas that meant to help people and make them better. Unfortunately, Prime Minister Netanyahu and some of cabinet members that like Ben Gvir and Smotrich have always, people like that have always deterred the process of peace. And you said it, Rabbi, many presidents, many of our presidents have tried to have peace. Unfortunately, Every time there is a hope for peace, some people who do not want a peace manage to, to, to blow it up. And, and this is an instant where very uh, unfortunate and, and miscalculated event happened on October 7th. And then the response was just outrage, attempts for ethnic cleansing or genocide or whatever you want to call it, way out of proportion to what needs to happen. And then to answer your uh, comment, Rabbi, about the Arab and Muslim countries, almost many countries uh, in the Muslim world and in the Arab world have, have recognized Israel, Jordan, Egypt, UAE, Morocco. All those states have declared that we want peace. Unfortunately, Israel somehow managed to, to destabilize that process and attempt to destabilize those countries. We really need to have good faith effort for peace and appreciate those who want peace and then at the same time give the people, the Palestinian people, their rights to live with dignity, hope for the future, hope to be recognized. When you say Hamas is a state, Hamas is not recognized as a state. They never had a state statehood with borders and freedom and this, and I'm not, don't, not trying to defend them. Mm -hmm. Just like Netanyahu has failed the Israeli people miserably by trying to use this war for his personal agenda, Hamas has failed the Palestinians. There are Palestinians who feel as though this is revenge for the way that Israel has treated pal people of Palestinian descent. Do you agree or disagree with that, and do most Palestinians support Hamas? I have to disagree with that because nothing justifies, in my opinion, hijacking or, or, or kidnapping women and children. But at the same time, you have to address the pain of those people in Gaza or West Bank who had no other option, had failed government, whether it's the Palestinian Authority or whether it's Hamas. Hamas was the only game in Gaza. 25%, 50% unemployment. Nobody had a choice to choose. Those babies who were being killed did not choose. No, Hamas does not represent all Palestinians, nor all Palestinians are Hamas. And one important point, Hamas, you have to differentiate between Hamas leaders and then those Hamas fighters who were lured into this while the leaders are making decisions in their air-conditioned hotels and villas here and there, those, some of those fighters are, are defending their families, their kids. They're, they're defending their lives. I do somehow respect those who want to defend their families. They have the right to defend their children. The leaders who make the decision are responsible for what happened on both sides, especially Prime Minister Netanyahu, who escalated this way beyond where it should be, and those leaders who made miscalculation, not consulting with the Arab leaders, with the Arab states, with their own constituents, with other Palestinian authorities, even with Iran. Iran was so quick to distance itself from this situation and, 
and then, and then everybody all of a sudden have distanced themselves and it's only Hamas, well, Hamas takes the blame. Sure. Uh, is this a way for the Netanyahu government to cleanse Gaza and is this just a land grab? No, I don't, I don't like agree with the term of cleansing. Uh, and the, Israel is united, really, Israel is united that Hamas has to be defeated. And I really believe for the Palestinian people, because Palestinian people are an incredible people. They're innovative. They're, um, they, they have the same ideals of, of statehood, of, of sovereignty that, that we all have and that Israelis have. So Israel is united. I don't that's want to what, That's where we disagree, yeah. Rabbi, again. Israel is not united. A few months ago, Netanyahu was fighting his own people about judicial changes. There has been There are a lot of people in Israel. Israel. Before October 7th, but after October 7th, it's you know, not behind Netanyahu. Most people in Israel, I think 85%, don't want him anymore as prime minister. And I certainly have issues with him and, and with some of the names you mentioned. Uh, with, with both of the names, Ben Gvir and Smotrich, I can say that openly, but, but Israel is united that this is a war not against Palestinians, it's against Hamas. Israel pulled out in 2005. Rabbi, Rabbi you have to agree that there are many Israelis who, who want peace, who, many Jewish people who we respect and they do not want a peace, they do not want ethnic cleansing, they want to live in peace, they want to raise their mm -hmm. kids, especially mm -hmm. the families of those hostages. If Netanyahu is, is not able to hear the cries of the babies and children and the Palestinian people have no sympathy with that, at least have sympathy with those families who have loved ones who are captured by Hamas and then with every new bomb, their loved one could be killed. But Israel tried to negotiate and actually Hamas refused it and then recently again refused it. And Israel, yes, we have to, that's the war, it's part of the war, is freeing those So hostages. we have to continue with that effort and we cannot just silence it and just make ourselves not aware of what's I happening. I will definitely agree on that. Okay, let me do this. We're gonna take another quick little break, okay. pause for the cause. We'll come back. We'll talk about the role that America is or is not playing in all of this. And do you believe that two states solution is possible and would that be the right way to go we'll be right back stay with us your perspectives on the role that the u.s is playing and are we playing it right or are we playing it wrong and is it going to be complicated because of the position that the U.S. Is, we, have we fueled the fire in some respects or not? Unfortunately, I have to say no. The U.S. is not playing it right. And President Biden had ample opportunity to be a world leader, to be a peacemaker. He has not led or acted in situation in a humanitarian way or in a decisive way. He must, I beg you, President Biden, Please listen to the cries of the children and civilians and mothers who are being killed. And also listen to the cries of the families of the hostages who do not want their loved ones killed. Israel is shooting everything that moves. Even when, when some of the hostages managed to escape, they were shot. We hear every day that the hostages are being killed. Thousands, thousands of people are injured. President Biden, please take your role as a world leader. Start making peace process. We can achieve as American more with peace than we could achieve with violence. He has to engage seriously with peacemaking in Ukraine, in Palestine, with China. We do not want another war. Our tax money should go to our citizens, to our infrastructure, to our health care, to our schools. Should not go to bombs. Our tax money should not go bombs to bomb here and bomb there. President Biden needs to take a stronger role, just like he told the neighboring countries, if you think of joining this war, don't. He should tell Netanyahu in a very loud voice, stop, stop this genocide. Very quickly before we go to the rabbi, his chief opponent right now is former President Donald Trump. Do you believe he would be better in this situation because he too had a very strong relationship with President Netanyahu. I have no problem with having strong relationship with Israel. I have a problem with killing civilians and innocent people for politics and for votes. I realize 
peace does not get you votes or donations, but it gets you to the right way to be a leader. There is 11 months to the election or 10 months. Both candidates have the, the chance to show who they are, what kind of leaders they're going to be to the world and to the Muslim community, to the Arab world, and to all the people in the world who love peace and want to have prosperity. Rabbi, your position in terms of President Biden and how he has played this? I think he's been a strong leader in the sense of standing by Israel, which is America's greatest ally in the Middle East and maybe even in the world, but he stood by Israel in this war against Hamas. So that's the most important thing. He's also urged Israel and pushed Israel to uh, allow more humanitarian aid in and really push them. And I think that's where we, we agree we, we, more humanitarian aid is important. But I think also, um, I don't like the term genocide. It's tragic how many civilians have died in this. About half of the deaths in Gaza have probably been civilians and children, and it's tragic and so horrible. It's not a genocide. Israel's is not targeting them. Israel is targeting Hamas, but unfortunately, Hamas is hiding behind these civilians. So, so I think, uh, Robert, but, but I'll just, I'll just finish oh, off one second, uh, Dr. Al-Hadidi, just, um, okay. just finishing up, and that is, I do hope America can be a peace builder. You know, Netanyahu's greatest mistake was that he let Hamas be the rulers of Gaza for so long. Israel pulled out in 2005, and he led Hamas, and he actually let money go to Hamas, and he felt this was a good arrangement. That was his biggest mistake, to allow that. America has to look to the future of Gaza and the Palestinians and show them a f good future with good leadership and work hard on that. Not just saying the PA and not just saying anyone else, but really come up with solutions. That's what America really could do, could, to give the Palestinians hope in a post-Hamas world. Okay, I've got a good, real quick break in there. We'll come back and I'll pick up with you. Allow me to answer to that. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I promise you, I'm my word, I'll come right back to you. We'll be right back. Stay there. Dr. Al-Hadidi, I cut you off right before I could tell you wanted to respond. I apologize, and I'll pick up with you. Thank you, Chuck. So, Rabbi, if it's not a genocide, can we send some food to those innocent, starving people, civilian children? One of my friends showed me pictures of tens of children have no shoes. Can we send some humanitarian aid? Can we send some shoes? They're not going to kill Israelis with the shoes and the loaves of bread water. If it's not a genocide that's meant to kill people with disease, starvation, deprivation, can we allow some humanitarian aids under the most strict inspection? We have to send food. President Biden, you have to send food, water, clothes, tents to those people until this war is over. And it's better now than later. Right. Is a two-state solution beyond reach? And is that the way to go? No, I don't think anything is beyond reach. I believe in peace and I support the humanitarian aid. Israel's talking about opening up a second crossing to let in even more, hundreds of more trucks in, as long as Hamas doesn't steal all of it. All of it. But I think a secure two-state solution is a possibility. There has to be a recognition by the Palestinians of a Jewish state. I can't speak for Netanyahu, but I can speak for the American Jewish Committee, which we're a regional chapter, and for our Jewish Community Relations Council. We stand firmly behind a two-state solution, and, but not run by Hamas, but it has to be a two-state solution, secure for Israel, where there's a recognition of Israel as a Jewish state. There has to be a two-state solution where the Palestinians will have their rights, their dignity, and hope to live. The Palestinians need to be recognized. Their future has to be recognized. Their, their rights to live and the uh, oppression and occupation and, and dehumanization has to stop. The Palestinians, if you don't want Hamas, the Palestinians have the obligation to get together, all those groups, elect, select, a government that's responsible, both the Palestinian Authority, Fatah, Hamas, unfortunately, that failed the Palestinians, and that's where we are. There's nobody to defend them. They need to get together. They need to uh, come with a, with, with a will to have peace and a will to, to have life. Uh, violence is not going to get us anywhere other than to more killing and more, more misery. Should there be a pause in 
the fighting that is currently going on in Gaza, at least until all the hostages get out. And is, and is that even more difficult now with the latest attack in Lebanon? No, absolutely. A, a, a ceasefire is needed now, not tomorrow. A ceasefire will make things better for everybody. An eye for an eye is going to leave a lot of people blind. Revenge and counter revenge, this is not going to end. Ceasefire now. People need to be men. Control themselves, control their emotions, control their devious wishes. If Rabbi Le Pen. release the hostages now, and there could be a pause in the fighting, absolutely, but not cease fire and then just hoping that Hamas will be nice. No, the hostages need to be released and no stopping in the fighting until the hostages are released. There this was is, This is a unrealistic, pause. unfortunately. Well, there was, there with, was a pause. With the bombs coming on everybody, killing even the hostages, how are you going to release the hostages? There has to be a way to cease hostility for people to talk. Right, right, no. If there and then we keep talking about the hostages. We have mm -hmm. to talk about the Palestinian prisoners. There is a lot of children, women, innocent people in, in the Israeli jails. I didn't know honestly, that there were children in the Israeli jails. It's my fault, but I realized that after this, this is not right. Like so in we, we jails, want the, we, yeah, we, we need the hostages out, but we need the innocent people in the Palestinian, Quick. In, in, in the Israeli jails to be released too, and then, and then they could be kept under And Israel has, has been doing released. that, did do that during the pause, and is waiting for so, Hamas so to has stay. Has to to stop. <laughs> the war has to stop now, Rob. Now i got to step in and be a referee because time is our worst enemy here. We appreciate both of you joining us today on Spotlight. Um, very quick yes or no. Uh, six months from now, are we going to be facing a very different scenario in which we can say we are on the road to some form of peace or is this something that you say it's not solvable and we've been watching it for generations and it's going to continue for generations yes or no yes if we can come together with people like dr al hadidi that's a start dr absolutely we have to be optimistic and double down on our efforts for peace mm -hmm. if my, it might be not realistic but we have to keep trying we will have a better future the fact that you're sitting down together even having this conversation civilly uh, is a step in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. And I want to thank you at home for joining us. I'm Chuck Stokes. We'll be back next week with more newsmakers in the spotlight. We hope you have a great week.